That is the use of these WNBA referees pretty much altering games, changing the outcome of games, and something has to be done in regards to that matter. The WNBA referees has definitely been playing a major role in who's winning games and who's losing games. Did you catch what just happened in the WNBA? A referee was recorded on camera specifically targeting Caitlin Clark, and this is no minor error. It's a full-blown scandal rattling the entire league. You might wonder, how bad could it really be? Well, it's worse than you'd expect. There's footage showing clear evidence that Clark is being unfairly singled out, and it's so obvious that it'll have you yelling at your screen. But what's even more shocking is the WNBA's response to this revelation. It's not what anyone expected. You know that unsettling feeling when something seems off while watching a game? Caitlin Clark has been dealing with that all season. It's like she's playing with a target on her back and the refs are just ignoring it. She got landing zone fouled at least five times that weren't called. She got the Kennedy Carter one that was called as a normal foul on the day. Um, the eye poke, the even if the eye poke, even if you believe it was intentional, it's still a flagrant one. The um, Alyssa Thomas um, shoulder barge to the face. Like there were a lot of blatant flagrants that weren't called. Let's discuss Clark's so-called special whistle. And trust me, it's not the kind anyone would want. It's the type that stays silent when it should be sounding, allowing her opponents to get away with rough play while Clark is left questioning what she did to deserve it. It's the kind of officiating that has fans scratching their heads and yelling at their screens. Lads, we, we watched the WNBA season this year and we know that Caitlin Clark's whistle was a strange one. We know that she had a very, very strange whistle and we know that the reality of the situation is that she got flagrantly fell five or six times throughout the year. It should have been 10. Remember that game against Chicago? Clark drives to the basket, focused and determined, with that unmistakable look in her eyes that says she's about to make something happen. Then, bam, she's knocked hard to the floor. The crowd gasps, waiting for a whistle, but nothing. It's dead silent, as if the refs suddenly forgot how to officiate. Now, here's where it gets wild. If this happened in the NBA, flags would fly, whistles would blow, and maybe even a player would get ejected. The contrast is striking, and it has everyone asking, what's up with this double standard? But now is a funny one, because we're now seeing, like, the same WNBA media that were happy. Well, not even, I'm not going to say happy, but, like, we're like, oh, these are normal fouls, this is just normal basketball. Now, when it happens in the NBA, making it a bigger deal. And this is where kind of the problem is, is that it was run one rule for Caitlin and one rule for everybody else. We're going to break down exactly what's going on in both leagues, and you won't believe the difference. In the NBA, players are protected. Hard fouls are called immediately, and dangerous plays are shut down fast. But in the WNBA, it's like they're playing by a completely different rule book, and Clark is stuck right in the middle of it. Let's talk about flagrant fouls. Those brutal plays that make you wince just watching them. The kind that make you think, ouch, that's gotta hurt. Caitlin Clark has been on the receiving end of some real hits, and yet the refs are acting like they're blind. There was also a stat that came out a few weeks ago that said Caitlin Clark received 17% of the WNBA's flagrant fouls this season, and 80% of those flagrant fouls were committed by the Chicago Sky against Caitlin Clark. Imagine this, Caitlin Clark driving to the hoop, fully determined to score, with that fierce look in her eyes that says, just try to stop me. And then, bam, she's hit hard, practically assaulted on the court. She's knocked to the ground with such force that you can almost feel the impact through the screen. You'd expect that to be an automatic flagrant, right? After all, the rulebook defines it as unnecessary or excessive contact, textbook flagrant foul. Here's Clark. For 29 points, gets tripped up. Now the Fever have really stretched out this one in the second half as we look at Diamond DeShields and Caitlin Clark. And Diamond with... Brace yourselves, because what happened next is unbelievable. The refs, they just shrugged it off. No whistle, no call, absolutely nothing. It was as if they were watching a different game altogether. Can you believe it? Clark's on the floor, likely seeing stars, yet the game continues like nothing even happened. Meanwhile, the crowd is going wild, stunned by the lack of action from the officials. 
Calls like this should be made, should be reviewed. People should know right off the bat, it shouldn't be the first round of the playoffs that players think that they can still do this kind of thing to Caitlin Clark, to Angel Reese. When Alyssa Smith basically choke slammed Angel Reese, that should have been nipped in the bud so fast. Here's the shocking part. This isn't just some isolated incident. We're going to take you through a string of plays that make it look like Clark's got a target painted on her back, with the refs letting it slide every time. Think back to that game against the sky. Clark's charging toward the basket, and then BAM! Diamond to Shield slams into her so hard, it feels more like a brawl than a basketball game. This one that we see right here that I believe should have been a flagrant foul was not called that. So there have been cheap shots, there have been hard fouls, there have been other plays that haven't even been called flagrant fouls. But when you have the face of your league getting nearly 20% of all flagrant fouls called against her, that is an issue. And that's not just an issue that the players have to work out. That is from top down. That goes to the commissioner level. Like that is the level that needs to control these kinds of things. And the refs? They're just standing there like they're waiting for a bus. No call, nothing. It's unreal, but it gets even wilder. You know Dewana Bonner? She pulled a move on Clark that'll make you wonder if you're watching basketball or WWE. Picture this. Clark's going up for a three-pointer in a playoff game. The crowd's on their feet. It's a crucial moment. And what does Bonner do? She undercuts Clark. Or get into it. Oh, yeah. It's a blatant, flagrant foul the kind that could end a career. And the refs? They're acting like they forgot their whistles at home. You might be thinking, come on, maybe they're just letting them play. But this goes beyond physical basketball. It's downright dangerous. These are plays that could seriously injure someone. And it's not just the fans who are noticing. Players, coaches, and even commentators are speaking up, calling for stricter enforcement of the rules. I feel like the WNBA should be even softer and even stricter rules when it comes to fouls, even more so than the NBA. Social media has been buzzing after these games, with people highlighting the missed calls. They're comparing it to the NBA, and the contrast is striking. In the NBA, hits like these would result in players being ejected faster than you can say, technical foul. Fans are sharing posts like, in both cases, the players should be ejected. This was bad refereeing. The media afterwards was biased. The refs in the W can learn a thing or two by watching NBA games. What's really intriguing here is that it's not just about the missed calls. It's about what they represent. Why is Clark being targeted in this way? Is it because she's too dominant on the court? Are they trying to toughen her up? Or is there something more going on? The real question is, is this how the WNBA treats its top players, allowing them to be knocked around without consequence? It's not just unfair to Clark, it sends a damaging message to the entire league. Imagine all the young girls watching these games hoping to play in the WNBA one day. What are we teaching them with this kind of treatment? Fouling and bully ball in excessive physicality in the game to me isn't as exciting to watch and I think for a lot of these casual fans and specifically a lot of these casual fans who have come into watching the WNBA because of Caitlin Clark who plays a smooth style of basketball, who shoots from really far away, who makes great passes, who handles the ball well. People are coming for a style of play that is similar to that. They are not looking for post players to be posting up on one another, drop step, one step to the basket, cheap shot. So what can be done to fix this? Do we need to bring in new officials, revise the rules, or is it time for the league to step up and put an end to this? As it stands, the state of officiating in the WNBA is looking pretty bleak, and if nothing changes soon, we could be facing more than just bad calls. We might be looking at a serious threat to the league's future. But the reality is, is that we all have two eyes. We all watch the games. We all saw that there were times where things were blown out of proportion. We also saw that there were times where she was very clearly targeted. We all saw there were, that there were times where the referees didn't protect her. We saw there were times where Christy Sides didn't protect her. We saw there were times where she should have been teed up that she wasn't. We saw the de-escalation committee. We saw times where she was trying to stop Aaliyah Boston getting teed up. We all watched. We all watched. You might be thinking, is this just a one-off incident? Maybe the refs were having an off day. Well, think again. This is not a rare occurrence. It's happening over and over, game after game. It almost feels like there's an unspoken rule when it comes to Clark. 
let her take the hits. To fix officiating, we need a combination of accountability, clear communication, and consistency. A complete revamp could involve better training, the use of advanced technology, and more transparent explanations for calls, similar to how the NBA handles things. If the league actively engages in addressing these problems, it would not only build trust, but also show they are committed to fairness and the integrity of the game. I don't know yet if I've seen a player be suspended this season in the WNBA. Do you guys remember when Draymond was kicking people in the nuts and doing all of these different things during his season? He got suspended swiftly. And that was to set an example for other players like, hey, this is not going to be tolerated. When they made it very clear that you have to let a three-point shooter come down from their spot, you cannot undercut them when they are going up for that three-point shot. That is something that needs to be implemented and enforced so much more in the WNBA. WNBA. Whatever happens next, one thing is certain. This issue isn't going away anytime soon. Clark is simply too skilled and too vital to the game for this to be brushed aside. As long as she remains on the court, facing scrutiny from the special whistle, fans will continue demanding answers. Thing, you guys and it might be controversial but there has been a lot of talk about a special whistle that certain players in the WNBA get and some players don't but I think that this is something again that we can compare to the NBA superstars are going to get a special whistle and they should get a special whistle do you know why because at the end of the day it's not just the sport it's the entertainment of the sport and you need to protect your superstars and the WNBA has not done well this entire season of protecting their one superstar who brought in more eyeballs than anyone else has ever done in the league. She should have a special whistle. Stay with us, because we're just scratching the surface of this wild ride through the WNBA's officiating mess. We've got plenty more examples, more breakdowns, and believe me, it's only going to get wilder from here. If you thought the no call against Chicago was bad, just wait until you see what happens next. Remember when we said those bad calls were just the beginning? Well, buckle up because this officiating disaster is about to blow up in ways you won't expect. It's no longer just about a few missed calls. This is an all-out storm shaking the very foundations of the WNBA. You might be thinking, it's just basketball, how bad can it really be? If only it were that simple. Every time a referee misses a call on a Caitlin Clark drive, it's like dropping a stone into a pond. The ripples are spreading throughout the entire league. And trust me, the consequences are huge. Let's zoom out and see the bigger picture. This isn't just about Caitlin Clark anymore. The ripple effect is flipping the entire WNBA on its head. From player safety to the outcomes of games, these missed calls are reshaping everything. And guess what? The fans are making their voices heard and take notes from the NBA. What the NBA did elevated the product. Let these women score more, let them put points up and stop these BS cheap shots. And the superstars on all levels, Caitlin Clark, Asia Wilson, Nafisa Collier, Sabrina Nescu, Brianna Stewart, they should all get a special whistle. Neka Ogumike, they should all get a special whistle. Those are the stars. That's the privilege you get when you get to that level. You've heard the saying, the customer is always right, right? Well, in sports, the fans are the customers, and they're not pleased. Fans are turning off their TVs, tuning out, and saying they've had enough. Can you believe it? All this referee drama is actually making people walk away from the game they love. It's insane, but it's happening. Not calling some of these fouls and not cracking down on some of these cheap shots and hard fouls that are so excessive, not only against Caitlin Clark, but against other players as well. You see compilations of them online. Not cracking down on these are going to turn people off to watching the WNBA, and it's not going to allow the league to grow and people to be more excited in players other than Caitlin Clark.